Give us what we want. It has become the imperative that no corporation, or any persuader, can afford to ignore. That's why modern political campaigns have also come to rely on an army of pollsters and market researchers, all taking the moment-by-moment -moment pulse of the man on the street. I got a rule, which is cab drivers and antique dealers know more about America than anybody else. And when the cab drivers feel a certain way, I know I need to listen. No one has imported the techniques and philosophy of market research into politics more successfully than Frank Luntz. His clients have been some of the most prominent Republican politicians of the last decade. There was the mayoral campaign for Rudolf Giuliani in 1993, his work for Silvio Berlusconi in Italy, and especially his collaboration with Newt Gingrich on the famous Contract with America, the document that ushered in the Republican Revolution in Congress. If an electricity company stood up and said, we want to do it for your benefit, we want to do it for our benefit, we want to do it for everyone's benefit, and so we have a better approach. Tonight, Luntz's client is not a candidate, but a Florida utility wanting to build public support for a change in how it's regulated on the environment. I know that the public is very down on corporate America in general, and they're down on power companies. So what is the language? What is the information? What are the facts? What are the figures that would get Americans to say, you know what, my electricity company, it's okay. 21st century technology, one, two, three, four. Sound science. Luntz's specialty is testing language, finding words that work. Integrity, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Reliability. Here's the other one. An art that even his political opponents <laughs> seem to grudgingly admire. Frank Luntz doesn't do issues. He does language around issues. He figures out what words will best sell an issue. And he polls them and he tests them and he focus groups them and he comes up issue by issue with how to talk about it and how not to talk about it. If the language works, right. the language Absolutely. works. No, it's just amazing. Luntz has sold his corporate and political clients the idea that a few carefully chosen words can make all the difference. But he's not just looking for any words. Luntz's quarry are those words that grab our guts and move us to act on an emotional level. It's amazing that those two words, in almost everything that we do, come up at the top. So why do you think that companies don't use them enough? I don't know. You're going to use these to register whether you agree or disagree, whether you believe or disbelieve. The dials go from zero to 100. On one hand, you have wind, which has no fossil fuels associated with it. To get at his subject's gut feelings, Luntz has them register their moment-by-moment -moment responses to a speech by a power company executive. Climbing, 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 changing fuels. But watching Luntz work, I couldn't help wondering, do the words he's found help the public see the issue more clearly? Or do they disguise it? Is Luntz listening to us so his clients can give us what we want, or so we can figure out how to make us want what they have to sell? The words work. The words apply to the policy. This is how we're going to sell it. And I will be able to walk to this electricity company on Monday and be able to say to them, your policy makes sense, and here's the language to explain it. That was the eureka moment when I watched people nod their heads I watched them look to each other, and they were willing at this point to fight for this position. You're replacing the bad with the good. It's almost like in with This the is a guy who is merchandising ideas and merchandising a movement and merchandising a political party. And in many instances, the words that he says are the ones that resonate, are ones that make, that obscure to some extent the issue. Take the so-called death tax. When it was called the estate tax, most people supported it. But Luntz managed to turn public opinion against it simply by giving it an emotionally loaded new name. For years, political people and lawyers, who, by the way, are the worst communicators, used the phrase estate tax. And for years, they couldn't eliminate it, but the public wouldn't support it because the word estate sounds wealthy. Someone like me comes around and realizes that it's not an estate tax, it's a death tax, because you're taxed at death. And suddenly something that isn't uh, viable achieves the support of 75% of the American people. It's the same tax, but nobody really knows what an estate is.
they certainly know what it means to be taxed when you die. I'd argue that is a clarification. That's not an obfuscation. Luntz has admonished Republican politicians to talk about tax relief instead of tax cuts and to replace the war in Iraq with the war on terror. He once told his party to speak of climate change, not global warming. What is the difference? It is climate change. Some people call it global warming. Some people call it climate change. What is the difference? It apparently made enough difference to Republicans that they began to use climate change almost exclusively. Uh, cause global, uh, cause climate change. The president's global climate change initiative. Climate change research. And we must address the issue of global climate change. I don't argue with you that words can sometimes be used to confuse. But it's up to the practitioners of this study of language to apply them for good and not for evil. It is just like fire. Fire can heat your house or burn it down.